Are more males born after wars? Do attractive parents have more girls? If either, what's the mechanism? Does anybody know? Um, <clears throat> so if these are those are actually two very different questions, although they're both related to, well, the first one is specifically related to the question of sex ratios. Yep. And uh, the second one is a little bit, uh, the one about attractive parents having more girls is a little bit uh, related to sex ratios, but more... Um, more to the question of sexual selection and how, as parents, can you maximize um, your genes going forward? Which, you know, as we as we said over and over and over again, it's an uninteresting goal. And in humans, um, this is sort of the least of what parents do. Um, but it obviously still is part of what parents do: is uh, leaving copies of themselves in the next generation. Uh, you hear that, Zach? Yeah. All right. Yeah, he's he's on it. Um, so, are more males born after wars? So. Uh, you, you can do a number of things here. First of yeah. all, just to make it clear why you would expect it is that wars tend to eliminate men. They don't just eliminate men, right? Wartime yeah. is bad for all sorts of things, for all sorts of reasons. But because men fight wars, and I believe that is a cultural universal, yes. um, that men do the actual fighting, they are killed at greater rates, which would leave you to expect that the production of men, um, well, there's two ways to think about it. You could think about it at a lineage level where there is a need for men, and you could think of it at the individual level, that is to say that from the point of view of a parent physiologically choosing whether to produce a male or a female, females are liable to be in surplus, males are liable to be uh, scarce, and therefore a male that you had after war might be disproportionately successful. Both of which can be understood from a sex ratio perspective, which is to say um, it's Fisher, right, who does sex yeah. ratio stuff. Um, so R.A. Fisher, the father of modern statistics and one of the best uh, evolutionary biologists of the 20th century, one of his contributions was understanding that um, not even all else being equal, but in almost every circumstance, in almost every circumstance, there are exceptions. Uh, we expect the sex ratio at the average age of first reproduction uh, to uh, be one to one in populations. Um, and you know his logic is a sort of population level logic, uh, which says basically if you have uh, an abundance of one sex, parents who can influence uh, the sex ratio of their own offspring will end up having better luck in producing grand offspring if they produce the sex that is currently underrepresented in the population. So I would point out that there's a very interesting outgrowth of this discussion. I wrote an essay many years ago on the hazard of the one-child policy in China, that <laughs> it was going to make China warlike, and that maybe that was even its purpose, because it produced surplus males who were going to not be successful in finding mates, and who would constitute the substance from which an army would naturally be constructed. So and it violates the one child policy violates the logic of Fisher, which is to say, you would expect in a country with a surplus of males that females would be prized as offspring, which is the opposite of what we see. Well, it's just, it's not the one child policy itself does not either predict this nor violate uh, what Fisher found and revealed about sex ratios. It is the cultural valuing of boy children over girl children overlaid on a one child policy exactly. that then produces too many boys such that you have um, not enough, not enough girls and therefore, and thereafter not enough women. Right. So <clears throat> the question in this case is, first of all, uh, is there conflict between the population level analysis and the individual level analysis in the aftermath of war and which one should dominate? Because yeah. after all, at least our argument is that it is lineages that fight wars typically and that that means that they are serving a lineage level purpose. Well, I don't know that there is a conflict, though. You know, I mean, it, I guess it, it depends on the war, well, right? It depends on the context. You know, if if, a, if an area has been so devastated that uh, most of the men have been killed and uh, and the women have been either enslaved and removed or raped and inseminated, um, you don't necessarily... Well, if, if they've been enslaved and removed, then you don't necessarily have a sex ratio difference, right? Um, but if uh, if... If the women are still there, and even if they now have within them the children of the of their their captors, their warlords, um, you have uh, a a a likely move both at the individual level and the population level uh, to produce more males. Yes, potentially. There's also another possibility here, which is that you would see polygyny break out in the aftermath of wars, which actually I've um, predicted would be likely because it doesn't make sense to sideline 
um, women reproductively just because there aren't, e you know, an equal number of men. So in other words, one man can fertilize many women in the absence of men as a result of war. You might imagine um, that all women who were capable of producing offspring would end up with offspring, which I have argued is a basis for um, lesbian coupling. That mm -hmm. lesbian coupling, a lesbian couple is perfectly capable of raising offspring and gametes aren't that hard to get. So not if you're a woman, <laughs> not if you're a woman. Um, so in any case, there's a deep question here but the the one I the piece I want to point out is that warfare is frequently going to happen at least by our model when um, there <coughs> when there is a deficit of resources in other words austerity causes populations to go to war mm -hmm. so in one sense if you were going to do this analysis and it may be that the analysis has been done it may be that Peter Turchin knows the answer to this question yeah. for one thing but yeah, we don't. We don't know. We're talking from an evolution. You know, we're trying to make the evolutionary predictions, but we don't actually know the answer. Right. Yeah. But it may be that the answer is different depending upon whether you won or lost. Right. I would imagine that that actually has some important implications. A hundred percent. And I, I guess I was speaking from the assumption that we're talking about the losers. Right. Yeah. Um, but the other thing is, if austerity is generating this, and we have made arguments in other places for mechanisms to prevent austerity from causing conflict, mm -hmm. from causing violence. But in the case that such mechanisms don't exist or haven't um, worked, and you have violence, in some sense, what it may be doing is backing the population away from carrying capacity, which if you do the individual level analysis, you would expect to have very little implication because an individual, just because the population may be better off backing away from carrying capacity, the individual still has an evolutionary interest in creating as many copies as they can in the next generation. On the other hand, if we start thinking in lineage level terms, which I would argue we always should, mm -hmm. that at a lineage level, it's a very different analysis because the long-term well-being of a lineage may indeed allow for some kind of restraint with respect to immediate moving, the immediate move back to carrying capacity. Well, but it's also true that we have argued, I'm not sure that we have argued publicly yet, but you know, it's in, it's in our book that, uh, that monogamy actually is a way of filling a landscape mm -hmm. um, more quickly. And so, um, you, yes, you, of course, if you're, if you're below carrying capacity, you expect birth rate to go up. That's sort of an obvious prediction, but you also expect a move further away from polygyny towards monogamy as there are more resources available and more landscape to move into. So I'm, I'm alluding to that. What I'm yeah. getting at <laughs> is that if you have an oscillation at the at carrying capacity and warfare results from some boost in population above normal carrying capacity that then results in violence and the violence mm -hmm. is a bloodletting that removes some people from the population um, the evolutionary drive to go into a population increase mode that would be facilitated by monogamy which brings all potential parents into child rearing that that might not be incentivized right so anyway, let's just say this is a complex question. For sure. Um, it may be that the pattern you hypothesize is there in a general sense. It may be that it's there for uh, winners and not losers or vice versa. Um, or it may be that it's absent for other reasons that dominate the question. And that we don't know, but it's certainly worth looking into. Mm -hmm.